Okay. We're on. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing amazing. Give me a second here. I'm going to let people chime in as they see us going live, and then I'm going to monitor the chat here. Let's see. Okay. And if anybody chimes in, have a question, I'll let you know. Um, but in the meantime, it's just you and me. <laughs> hey. How's your day? Wonky. Wonky. Is that different from any other days? Today was not the best day. I've been working on a uh, potential offer that was supposed to be made tomorrow at noon. And a miracle could still happen. <laughs> we, However. Don't we just love that? Like we're sitting around waiting for offers. <laughs> well, I was supposed to be making one. And uh, okay. this building is interesting. It's a triplex, mm -hmm. but it's not just a residential triplex. It actually has a commercial space on the bottom. Uh -huh. And it has two residential units above it. And the interesting part that I learned is that it didn't really fall under a residential conventional loan because the bottom space was more than 20, 25% of the total building. Mm -hmm. So then I went to the commercial lenders and the commercial lenders said, well, it's not really commercial either. <laughs> <laughs> that started this interesting series of conversations of which I learned immensely from. That's the one thing I will say about real estate. It's never the same and you always learn a ton. So right now I'm sitting in the space of, I didn't hear what I wanted to hear today. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still hoping out that something great might happen. So who knows? Awesome. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do a couple of quick intros and then um, we'll dive, we'll dive into some cool stuff. Okay. Um, so welcome everybody to uh, Wisdom Club Live. Happy Monday. Um, Mondays are always amazing because we come back, well, most of us anyways, come back fresh from the weekend, refresh, rejuvenated, and a lot of people back to work. And uh, right about now, a lot of people, you know, at least here in California, are uh, getting off work in some way, shape, or form, whether they're getting off their telecommuting and trying to decompress or whatnot. And some people might might be back to um, commuting, you know, getting back uh, to to their homes and stuff like that. So it's always a very interesting time on Mondays and we always get a lot of viewers. So I thank you all for joining and being on here. Um, if you're on live, would you mind please uh, just a comment that you can hear us okay so that there's no technical uh, glitches or anything like that. If you are happen to watch this um, as a replay, uh, please just type the word replay so that I know that you came on and to check us out. Um, so a uh, short week this week, we have um, 4th of July coming up and I know it runs on a Saturday, which is kind of a good thing because oftentimes it runs in the middle of the week and kind of screw us up. And uh, we're taking Friday off uh, for July 3rd. So that's awesome. So I hope you guys all kind of um, plan for your safe 4th of July, especially this year, especially, especially this year, just because uh, people are just acting a little more weird than normal than all the other years. So I encourage you to just be safe. Um, I'd hate to know that, find out later on something had happened. So please be safe out there. But without further ado, um, I wanna introduce my guest today. Her name is Maya Hirsu. Yeah. Her last name is always, always a great topic of conversation. So I'm gonna have her talk about that a little bit too. Um, but she uh, comes to us from uh, the Bay Area in Northern California, more specifically in Oakland, California. She's a, an amazing real estate agent, which um, I always love talking to and getting, um, getting some feedback and ideas from. Um, her market is quite different from ours. And uh, so I do wanna talk about that as well, but I also want her to introduce herself and uh, let everybody know a little bit about her and her personal life as well as her journey um, into real estate earlier on to get her uh, where she is now. So take it away. Hey, thank you. 
a pleasure to be here today. So thank you for inviting me. Uh, my name is Maya here. So do you want me to go into my name now or will we circle back? <laughs> I think it's always a good start. <laughs> the misnomer is Siri, which many of us have, likes to mispronounce my name and she calls me Miss Here Socks. <laughs> That's awesome. The name is spelled H-I-E-R-S-O-U-X. So a lot of people stick the X on there. Oops, sorry, that's the ice maker. Um, however, you know, it's really easy to pronounce. It's pretend like you're calling a girl named Sue, come here, Sue. So my name has always been unusual. It's actually a Belgian name. But that being said, um, I was raised in the Bay Area. I was born in San Francisco. So one of the few in the proud, I can say. Um, we moved to Berkeley when I was three, I think, two and a half, three. And I was raised on the North Berkeley, Albany, Kensington border. And then we made the big move to Oakland. <laughs> so I grew up in the Oakland Hills. I always say with the deer and the skunk. And I then went to San Diego for college. Um, went to Colorado because I couldn't ski for a long time and then came back. And I've been a realtor for six years. I got my license because my entire family is in real estate. I was the last one getting my license. Um, and when I got, I actually got my license uh, 12 years ago, I think, and didn't use it, put it in a filing cabinet, kept renewing it. And then I, a little bit about me, I have a little boy, his name is Chance. He's the apple of my eye. Um, He's with his father right now for another couple days, which is why I have the luxury of being here with you uninterrupted. <laughs> He's seven <laughs> and he would be in my lap wanting to be on part of this interview. <laughs> That's his personality. Uh, awesome. um, so anyway, I had him and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I'd been doing some odd contracts and then I literally was cleaning up my filing cabinet. It's not that glorious of a story. And I found my license and I thought, huh, I'm not gonna renew this unless I actually use it. So I made a deal with myself. I said, I will try it for one year. And if I like it and I'm good at it, I'll stick with it. And that is it. So I've been doing it ever since and I love it. So six years ago, um, that was a good time to be in real estate. Six years ago, 2014. Something like Wacky. that. Yes, I started in June of 14. Um, I didn't get my first sale until actually November. And that was a condo in Berkeley. And then I had a dry spell for another three months. And then I took off. <laughs> <laughs> we love that. We'd love to hear that. Not everybody takes off. So, um, you know, that's, that's really great to hear. Um, but it was, it is, it has been a good time in real estate because um, as we all know, it's had, it's, it's continued to have its run, you know, the price is going up. And then luckily for us, the last, um, uh, what, a year or so that the interest rates have really come down because we thought maybe that that was the end of our you know, good times with our under 4% interest rate. Right. right. And uh, here we are at uh, 3%. And if you're lucky, you get under that too. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it's very great. Um, so you, you said something earlier. What was that? It's been quiet all day. And as soon as we start the interview, every car goes by. I'm like, <laughs> this is commuting time. Totally good, totally good. That that's how people know that like this is for real. This is not. <laughs> <laughs> this is not like dubbed in or anything like that. Um, so uh, you said something earlier. Um, so you said you were the last to, to uh, be in real estate. Is your your family was in real estate previously? Or? Yes, my father was a broker in New Mexico, and my sister is a agent up at Lake Tahoe, and she's still an agent. She mm -hmm. works for Chase International. Okay, great. So you are also in a real estate family. Um, like me, my mom has been an uh, agent for, you know, I, I try not to get the exact number because I'd like to just guess <laughs> because it's so many. So I always tell people like 35, 40 years, something like that. Yeah, so I feel better too, probably. Yeah, 
yeah, so, so you know, um, for as long as I know. Um, but I did not get into it and didn't really want to get into it for the most part. Um, but to be honest, I didn't know what really it was. You know, we all understand like your typical nine to five job, your typical working for a corporate, your typical, like if you own the business, if you, you know, those kinds of things. But when you start talking about real estate, it's like a whole separate animal that you really don't know. And, and, and it's different from agent to agent as well. So um, that's hence what we said earlier, like every day in real estate is different. Um, so, so, um, so yeah, um, has the, has, has being in the family where there are other people that have been in real estate, has that been a benefit to you when you started? Only in a sense that I really had an, a pre-understanding that I had to be adaptable, flexible, and experience change, and that I would be dealing with people's emotions. <laughs> and... So from that perspective, yes, because I used to sit, as my mom would tell the story, I'd sit at the table and my eyes would glaze over as they all started talking shop. <laughs> yeah. So I was around it enough to hear it and really have an understanding of what I was getting into. Yeah. Good, uh, good dinner table conversations, huh? Yes. Yeah. So because you can't make it up, right? <laughs> uh, unfortunately for me, my dinner um, real estate conversation was a lot different. Uh, my mom didn't talk about it. All she always said was like, um, I'm really busy. Oh my gosh, you know, da, da, da. and then um, for a while there, for a long while, we'd see her come, come in like Thanksgiving dinner and she would, she would have her, you know, things that she was carrying on her wrist that was hanging, right? So there would be like two phones on one side and one phone on the other side. And these were the flip phone days, you know? <laughs> You know, so any given time, any of those would ring. <laughs> and that's how she entered, you know, every single time and would be sitting there like, you know, there's a, a whole procession of, you know, getting the turkey out, checking it, carving it, getting all the settings and all that kind of stuff. The kids running around everywhere would sit at the table and it'd be like 5.30 or whatever and the phone would ring <laughs> on her wrist <laughs> and she would go, oh, I gotta go. And then like literally there were there were years where she just cut the cut the Thanksgiving dinner short, like she just leave. Like, oh, I guess she had she I guess she had a client, you know, she would just leave. So um not much like real talk about real estate, but that's my experience. Like, oh, that's what real estate is like. You know, you 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 never have your own time. The client calls, you gotta leave, and you know, phones can ring. Like sometimes I see her like one would ring and the other one ring right after, and like they're all ringing. <laughs> I know, and like trying to figure out which one is ringing, you know. So, so <laughs> expensive bracelet to have. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, so very interesting. So, really, for all of you out there watching, you know, unless you're really a real estate agent or you've been around real estate agent, you know, in more intimately, like, or you have a spouse who's a real estate agent, like, it's really hard to describe the experience. And from family to family and um, agent to agent, it's very, very different because there's no, like, regular regulation to say you have to do things this way or that way. And so everybody kind of, kind of runs free. And so that makes it really interesting. And then the experience from uh, from the consumer side can be different from one person to the next. And so Absolutely. that's very, that's very interesting too. So um, tell, uh, tell everybody like, what's, what's the Bay area like? I know you you're like uh, a native and born and raised kind of thing and been around a long time. And um, for, for those who don't know, you can kind of describe a little bit. One of the things, reason I wanted to ask you because I'm getting a lot of calls right now of people who are relocating for one reason or, to, or another. And a lot of people from Bay Area, and I don't know if there's a lot of people wanting to move from South uh, California to the Bay Area or from the rest of the country to Bay Area. Can you kind of kind of touch on, you know, number one, what's different, you know, about your market over there? And number two, have you been getting calls of people relocating because of all this COVID thing right now? Ah, okay. So what's different? Um, 
would that be in relationship to like just anywhere else in the United States, LA, things like that? Sure. Anything that anything that kind of jumps jumps to mind. I know we're doing this a bit cold. I'm a, I'm kind of putting you a little bit on the spot, but okay. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so the Bay Area is a very diverse place, and every area in the Bay Area has a very distinct pace to it, as well as a climate to it. So it has a different lifestyle. It has different things that are important. So, for example. Um, the bay where I am, which is literally right across the bay from San Francisco. So if you got on the Bay Bridge and you're driving, the first city you would run into is Oakland on your right and Berkeley on your left. And so climate wise, we get a lot of fog, actually, because it comes right through the gold, underneath the Golden Gate Bridge and then it goes north and south. And interestingly enough, that's exactly how our market works too. Everything originates in San Francisco migrates across the bridge and then spreads north and south. So it's just like the weather pattern, which is, I've never really thought of it that way. It's true though. Um, so the peninsula is where Silicon Valley is, very high tech, a um, lot more. We do have a lot of tech workers up here in Oakland and Berkeley, but not nearly as much as South Bay does. Um, we have the same kind of California bungalows that Palo Alto has, but they might be a million dollars less. <laughs> to give you a picture of our landscape, um, when you come across the bridge, Oakland is a really large city and it's very diverse, both in terms of ethnicities as well as um, socioeconomic strata. And because it's so large, you can still get a house, listen to me still, you can still get a house in Oakland for probably 600, maybe, um, maybe 550, and that's in the lower parts of Oakland, and then they go all the way up to the hills and the mansion, and then you have Piedmont, which is an enclave inside of Oakland, so Piedmont is this little city that sits like a fist, and Oakland is all around it, <laughs> so that's kind of an interesting place, um, and then you have Berkeley, and Berkeley is um, where, obviously, where UC Berkeley is, it has a very, um, young population to it. Um, it makes for very different microclimates within Berkeley itself. There's probably 15 different districts in Berkeley. Each one has its own flavor. Um, it's fed by two different BART, three different BART stations. <laughs> um, and BART used to be our biggest way to transport ourselves to San Francisco. And so what's changed with that, leading into your next question, is um, COVID really has all of us rethinking what's important in our lives. And now that Facebook and a couple of other, of the other larger companies are now saying that we're not going, they're not, their employees are not going back to work until January, they may not come back at all. And so people are really, as even in your area, are now reevaluating, am I really in my dream home? Is this really where I want to be on lockdown? And how long is lockdown? And will this ever happen again? And blah, blah, blah. So what we are seeing is I'm not seeing necessarily people calling to relocate into the Bay Area, but I'm definitely seeing people relocating out. Um, I know that the census says that people are coming from Chicago. Um, I haven't really gotten those calls lately, but I definitely, for instance, two people last week out of the blue, both said Tennessee. People are moving to Tennessee. Um, more locally though, people are moving up to the wine country and they're also moving up to Lake Tahoe where Linda Granger is. So we are starting to see people really rethink, um, do they wanna be in this much concrete? And is it really important next to be a to a BART station? So it'll be interesting to see how that dynamic changes because when I was growing up to age myself, it was prestigious to live in the hills at the top of the hill with a view. Now it's prestigious to live right next to the BART station. So you have these teeny little houses that are costing a million dollars. And it's going to be interesting to see, do people still really want to be near BART? What or is would that? they rather have a family compound up in the hills? What, what, is, what does that mean? 
tiny little houses that that is more desirable now in the parts what does that mean can you okay what that means is the younger generation i don't want to label them really wants to be in a walkable area so they can get their coffee and transportation so the makeup of our landscape was this your starter homes which were two ones modest homes usually about 900 to 1100 square feet were all in the flatlands and the larger houses as you went up the hill the houses got larger and larger so what would happen is you moved to the bay area you were usually in the flatlands you got married you had a kid then you had a second kid and then you moved up the hill and then when you downsized you'd go back down to the flatlands and it was a good switch the challenge is with the younger people wanting to live next to bart they're making the prices go up next to BART. So all of a sudden we have, it was very apparent to me last year when I went on tour, many of the homes had uh, bathrooms that you could actually wheel a wheelchair into. People were living in five bedroom, four bath houses because it just didn't make sense to move their tax base, to sell that big home, buy a house that wasn't that much less. <laughs> just to move down the hill. So we're finding that a lot of people are living in place right now um, up until they, well, and this was before COVID. Now people don't even wanna put their family members in places, assisted living because they can't see them. Um, so who knows what's gonna happen, um, but it was more advantageous to start your, your starter home more in the smaller California bungalows, move up the hill and then go back down. Um, so that'll be an interesting switch. So basically what you're saying is as time has changed, okay, a lot of younger people, they, they don't want bigger houses. They want convenience. They want to save time. They have no time. They're all venture capitalists, I'm sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, they got no time. They're going to hop on a train. They're going to go do their meetings. They're going to grab their coffee. They're going to go. They got, uh, they don't care how big it is. They just need a place to sleep basically, in, in to, to a degree, you know. Yep. You can fight among the smaller homes if you want, but you know, right. Right? They're, not, they're, not look, they're, not, they're not looking at the traditional movement of larger homes going up, a big family, blah, 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 you know, you know then downsize retard. So that's what, that's what you're saying. But then there's a lot of people that are moving down here just because of COVID, because of, um, they don't have to, they don't have to be in the office anymore. They don't have to be in their corporate buildings anymore. So now it freed them up and they've, they have already told them that, hey, you know, we don't know anything until January or something to that case. So now like, oh, I can go wherever I want, you know, and I just yeah. tell them, yeah, take my laptop, let's go, right? Um, but then, you know, I'm hearing these things about how transactions are being done up in the Bay Area compared to what it's being down here, because we were a lot more a lot more traditional down here, a little bit more suburby in some ways. Um, and, you know, our transactions are pretty, pretty straightforward. But then I'm hearing the people, because it's been so crazy, the real estate up there with all the bidding, moving prices up, all these uh, people coming into Silicon Valley, they're starting to like super creative financing, you know, and the young younger people are like really thinking out of the box is how, how they negotiate, how they, you know, like I'm just hearing like all these crazy stories, you know, up there. I just had a guy who wanted to relocate down here and told me like, hey, I'm going to rent first and I'm going to, you know, scope out the area before I buy something. And if we like it, we'll buy something. That's no problem. But um, I'm definitely not signing no contract for 12 months, even though all of the contracts here are at least six to 12 months. And if I sign this contract for 12 months, I want to know from the owner today, right now, before I sign anything, that I can get out of it anytime I want. Well, what's the point of a 12 months lease contract if you just want to get out? Well, you know, you know, we can do anything we want, right? Because like, hey, we can't, I can't foresee what's going to happen three months from now. If I get a job opportunity somewhere else and I got to go, they're going to let me out, right? Hey, if, uh, you know, I got a health problem or like something happens or, you know, people, people pass away, right? They can't, they can't hold you to that if somebody passes away. Like, these are the things that like I'm hearing. Like, I just don't hear these things from people around you. They're like, 
we're gonna start a family, we're pregnant, we already got a kid, we just want a nice place to live. 12 months, 24 months, we can even do 24 months if you can lower our rent. You know, this, those, that's the kind of conversation I'm hearing. Like, this is like, mm. like, well, you know what? I can't get 12 months, you know, once you find me a place for month to month and then, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go to Hawaii for six months after this. You know, like, like he's like bouncing, like, you know, and, and that's kind of the impression I get from the kind of tech culture and the tech things that we see up there. I'm not sure not everybody, but you now we don't generally see that kind of, I don't, I don't want to say aggressiveness, but like, hey, I just want what I want. You tell me I can, you know. I can't say yeah. that I've experienced that in our market. I think on the other end, what I have heard a lot of lately is that people are just moving out of state to be honest a lot of them aren't even moving within the state they're like it's too expensive <laughs> we can go to texas or we can go to uh tennessee or raleigh north carolina and we could get a huge house yeah it's like 30 percent of the cost right right like and huge like you know and they can still make the same money if they can commute now previously it had held them to the commute Right. You know, hold up to the area. Now they're not bound to that anymore. So how many thousands of, you know, employees as Google and Facebook and, you know, Apple have there that are like unleashed, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like attack of the nerds. <laughs> well, it's just like it's been since I started, there's a lot of buyers and not enough inventory. So yeah. Yeah, and so I don't, I don't really foresee that to change a whole lot. There might be a little bit of leveling off. We're seeing the same thing down here too. So, so anyway, that's what I kind of was curious about, you know, in in, in the contrast, you know, of the kind of things that you're 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 seeing because we're super suburby down here in Orange County. Right. Well, we're not 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 on the East Bay. So, as the easiest way to describe it is. All of the cities that ring the actual bay are not, we don't call them the suburbs and most of them are not, it's not like my house next, the next door neighbor's house looks like mine, it doesn't. It's once you get over that hill and you go out to Lafayette, Orinda, Moraga, the valley, then that's where the suburbs are. Um, you know, the market's changed dramatically since I got in the business. I mean, I remember, I was just telling someone last night, like, Oh, when I first started, there were cash offers everywhere, like everywhere. Um, not so much anymore. I mean, yes, they do exist. Yeah, I actually keep thinking that there would be more given our uh, post IPO environment, not as much as we all had anticipated. Um, we are, depend oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No. Um, did you guys, when you guys were getting cash, cash buyer, were you guys getting a lot of foreign buyers out of those cash buyers? Oh, yes. That was the other thing. Um, we had a lot of buyers from China about two, three years ago. And then that stopped about a year and a half, two years ago when the laws changed. It stopped like overnight. It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when people were having to get super creative about how to buy a house. And it was really hard to tell somebody so there's these three contingencies in your offer, but if you put them in, you're not gonna get the house. And they're like, what's the point? You're like, I'm I can't recommend that you don't put them in there. However, very weird conversation to have with people, so. Yeah, so for those of you who are watching, uh, uh, not really sure, is a few years back, there was a lot of cash buyers um, from overseas because they can come down here or they don't even have to come down here. Um, they, they get a video or something like that. They see like there, there's a home here. They wanna buy it because they want long-term security. It's an investment for them. And uh, they know that um, with the market the way it is here in the US, they're gonna make still a ton of more money than if they invested in their own country. So they were bringing in money here. So that's one thing. The other thing that we're getting a lot here, I'm, I reside here in Irvine where there's a big Asian community and also um, a huge uh, academic uh, program from you know, K through you know, university wow. to UCI and all that stuff. And uh, they're all, everybody, all the Asian communities and people that live here, families that live here are telling everybody in 
their country, that they love it here, that they should buy here. And they only want to buy in the city of Irvine when it's one street outside of the border, like no way, no how. Wow. So what I was getting was people like saying, hey, I'm buying a home here. I'm going to pay you cash. It's a two bedroom, you know, condo for whatever, 800 grand or whatever here in Irvine. And um, I'm just going to buy cash and, um, and I'm going to keep it. I can rent it in the meantime, but my goal is that my kids are five right now. When they grow up, they can, they can, they can uh, move down here and they can go to school here and they can get all their academics and all their uh, degrees and stuff here. And, um, and so um, those were the talks. So they were planning five, 10 years out. Wow. Um, now cash planning five, 10 years, cause they got the money. Right. And so um, unfortunately they, they would just, they would bid it up. They didn't care, you know, hundred grand, there was no problem for them. And that would outbid the local market. They will outbid the people that live here and want to buy here and can't afford it because they got outbid. And uh, I think that's part of what you were saying earlier. Um, and so since then, what's happened is that regulation have uh, come in because they know it's bad for our housing market and um, told and, and put in a regulation where that you cannot buy a home here in the US unless your money was in here in a US bank. And so that's, that's what took um, everybody out of the market, halted it because it was very difficult to get the money out of the country to get it here in the US bank. There was a process and you also can only do that if you had a corporation and you legitimately can, uh, your corporation legit, uh, normally transfer money back and forth in the business and I allowed you an excuse to say I can transfer money through the corporation. So you couldn't just willy-nilly do that as an individual. So that put a halt on a lot of stuff and just within the last month, I'm still getting people say, will you take cash buyers from international? We have cash, we're from China, we wanna buy it now, we'll pay it. And, um, and they say, I said, no, unless you're, if your money's here in the US, great, we can do that. But then their next question was, will they take Chinese money? <laughs> no, they won't. They're American banks. <laughs> well, no, 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 not the banks themselves. Will we, oh. as the sellers, take, right. take Chinese money? Because what they're hoping is that, hey, we have Chinese sellers, they have relationship in China, and that they can do the trend, they can exchange the money out there. Well, that's illegal. It's illegal because you have an estate that's in the US and you can't, you can't say, oh, I paid a thousand bucks for this home. We transfer our money you know, outside of the US and now the home is deeded, now it's yours. You can't do that, right? So, there, so, um, so anyway, getting, I got quite a few of those questions actually. But oh, somebody's doing it. Actually, that's interesting. But somebody is doing them. That's why they ask. Right. So this is entirely illegal. I would not that's stake my license. Button. Thank you, and not get sued. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, hopefully that's helpful to some of you out there. Like you might get some of these things happening. Um, maybe it only happens in the luxury market to an extent, because for the most part, right now, people in the normal market, in our market, anywhere, you know from 500,000 up to one and a half million is our normal market. And so that, that tends to not happen so much because now at least people who live here are the ones that are buying the homes that need the homes. Um, and so we don't see it as much with that, but uh, people who are still investing in the higher end because right now the higher end is kind of a deal right now. They're getting about anywhere from five to 10% 10, 10 off market price. And so they're, they're um, they're definitely wanting to capture that deal. So that's, a, that's kind of the, the thing with it. Um, so that's the real estate market. You know, um, I appreciate you um, kind of going through that because um, always good to know more about that because we are seeing more people coming down here. And it's good to carry a conversation and know the people that are coming down here, like what they were um, used to up there. So, so that's really super great. So um, for people who don't know and like 
what's it like living in the Bay Area? You know, what's the lifestyle kind of like? I mean, you kind of mentioned a little bit that it's more city, more concrete jungle, just because so many people have migrated there for the tech, for the for the jobs, for the business opportunities, whatnot. And so, um, like, give us a, a good feeling about what's going on up there. Well, the reason people really decide to live in the Bay usually is because we are so close to everything. And when I say close to everything, you can literally, where I live, I can be at Stinson Beach in 45 minutes. I can go to the wine country, that's 45 minutes away. If I choose to go skiing, I have Lake Tahoe, that's three hours away. If I wanna go to the desert, Joshua Tree would be farther. That'd probably be a five, seven hour drive. Um, we have the mountains and we've got the beach and we literally have both of them. Um, affordability, definitely the closer you get to the middle of the state, it becomes more affordable. And then once you hit the mountains again, it becomes less affordable. Mostly, interestingly enough, because of all the forest fires we've had lately, one of the things that we're actually having to consider, even where I live, is the high prohibitive cost of fire insurance. We're actually having a major problem with that right now. So um, the Bay Area is definitely for people who um, love the outdoors. We have a lot of completely different things you can do from running to swimming to biking, skiing, tennis. Um, I wouldn't say everyone is an outdoors person. However, um, just knowing that you can literally get in your car and drive a half hour in almost any direction and be somewhere divinely and inspiringly beautiful. <laughs> um, the more I think about it, the more I did grow up in a family that loved real estate. We always went for Sunday drives to check out open houses. <laughs> you just you just represents me to that, actually, Leah. Thanks. I was like, all right, we would drive to Moraga and go look at houses. <laughs> so happy! I'm so happy. Like when I hear that stuff from you, like um, my mom never did that. She just kept to her own, just kept doing her own thing. And the downside is that I never knew what real estate was, you know, but the upside is that I didn't have to be tortured, at, you know, when I was younger, you know, right. <laughs> right. we did do, you know, she, um, you know, when the mark before the crash, before 2008, you know, there was a run up that um, was easy to get mortgages and stuff like that. And she picked up, you know, extra three or four properties along that time because she could uh, finance it and she rented them out and that's so she could build her you know, portfolio of properties um, at that time. So that was really good for her because now that you definitely couldn't do it, like they wow. did not give you that kind of loan at all. And so, um, so that's, that's some of my visibility, like, oh, bought another home, you know, that kind of, <laughs> you know, no idea why, you know, like, you know. Like, I, in, like the phones on her wrists. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And then she would, she would manage the properties herself on the rentals. So like, you know, again, you know, that's just her thing. And she was always a single agent. And so I vowed myself that whatever I do, I'm not going to be a single agent hand handling everything. I'm going to, you know, get my TC, you're going to do everything. We get an assistant, we're going to do everything. And then we're going to, you know, go down the line and um, kind of, you know, bring together a team that's really going to service this so that I can actually have Thanksgiving, you know? <laughs> so that's my, that's my own personal lesson. Um, so, so that's very, very um, interesting to just um, see the contrast, you know, between, you know, your experience and mine. So well, I will say I had to learn quite a few things. I'm a very different realtor now than I was when I first started. When I first started, I had no boundaries. I didn't have them with myself. I didn't have them with my kid. I didn't have any relationship I was in. And I had to really look at that and go, this isn't working on any level. <laughs> and I, I burnt out. I totally burnt out because I didn't have, I didn't know when I could stop. And then finally, I just realized in order to be able to do this sustainably, <laughs> you know, I'm not saying I don't work all the time. I do. However, I don't, I don't take calls at Thanksgiving. <laughs> you know, I definitely tell my clients, gonna enjoy my family. Yeah. Talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> 
I think, and I think we all have to have to had had to done that uh, when we start being real estate agents. We all have to hustle in the beginning to get all the stuff underneath our belt, you know. Uh, and we all kind of have to crash and burn in the beginning, you know. But it's definitely not a long term goal that you should do that. And so that's kind of where I'm thinking. Like I definitely like take as many calls as I can. Um, this is a really good opportunity right now with everything that's going on. There's a lot of movement, a lot of people uh, wanting to buy. And if you can, you know, service them properly, they'll find a home. You know, it's, it's not to the point where there's no inventory and there's definitely, you know, um, you know, listings out there that, that you can get as long as you're conscientious about it, that you're on top of the timeline, that you're not, you're not waiting like, two weeks to put in an offer, you know, knowing you're going to, because it's definitely a seller's market. Right. Um, but, you know, with that, with that being said, you know, we all have to hustle, uh, like, like you said, but we, we still have to make sure we don't burn out and make sure that we, we can service at the highest level without burning out because we weren't burned out. We can't service anybody. <laughs> right. So that's super fun. Um, yeah. So thank you very much. I, I think you had, uh, I asked you if you had any questions for me, which is funny because you had a couple of cool, funny questions for me, <laughs> which I love it. So I'll, let you, I'll, 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 we'll turn the tables a little bit and let you ask. <laughs> All right, you ready? Yeah. Hey, Leo, do you eat ice cream? Oh my God, I so eat ice cream. But I'm really picky. I'm really picky because I know I can have it all the time. And this is the same that goes with wine too. So I don't drink, but if I'm going to drink, I'm going to have the best bottle that I can get my hands on. And Got if it. I do drink anything other than wine, then I want to get my hands on the best bottle of scotch, single malt scotch that I can find. And so no different for, for ice cream. Um, I definitely have my favorites and I can't just be ice cream. Um, it has to be fresh made gelato from a place I know that freshly makes them every day, you know, and so. Organic or is it just freshly made or is it both? It's, it's freshly made and it's also gelato in the, in the Italian traditional sense, right? So soft. Yeah, soft and the, you can tell it's fresh too and the ingredients are there such that the consistency is like throughout, right? And you don't have... I don't know if they somehow import some of the ingredients in because it's not the sugary sweet that you get a lot of times here with you know American stuff. Um, like when you go to Europe and you have you can have sweets like literally all day and you would not get like over sweetened. Right. You right. know, there's like a sweet index of some sort. Make me want to go to Italy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Totally. Like when you have it there, like oh my god, it's so good. It's because this this combination of like the balance of the, um, the creamy and the sweet and it's never over sweet. Same thing like the food there. It's never like over salty, but then it's so satisfying, right? And so, um, so it's that thing, it's, it's, it's somehow that thing there. So when you come down next time, we'll go. Perfect. Okay. And, um, and, and then, uh, so you asked me, I think earlier, I'll, I'll, I'll let you ask it. It's, it's better if you ask it. <laughs> So what flavor do you like the most? So I always default. It's always got to be some sort of chocolatey and it's got to be some sort of um, mint. So mint chip is always on the menu. Okay. And then so they have like a regular chocolate, double chocolate. And sometimes I get a little crazy and I'll go do like, a, do like Rocky Road, right? Oh. But then I get a little minty. So we get these like, oh, so on top of this, this place makes um, uh, waffle cones fresh. Oh. Like, so like when you're outside like you're heading toward it you smell the waffle cones you know and so like i pick my own i'm so picky like i pick my own cone because they all come out different oh, that one <laughs> someone, someone like small and strong scrawny like i gotta have the one with a little bit of flair you know <laughs> so anyway going going to eat and having dessert like it's an adventure for me like i always have my specific things that i like so, so they like allow you basically like three or four flavors that you want, like you can pile it on this cone. Oh. And so I've kind of scaled down because I used to ask them for like, you know, 
stuff it like to the bottom of the cone with one flavor and then another flavor and another flavor and sometimes I'll put one on the side but I scale down to like like two and maybe if I'm really crazy I'll do like three oh, okay. so, um, but sometimes okay. they have these flavors that they, they do a flavor of the month so there's always an option of what flavor that month is and it's always seasonal so like Halloween would be like some sort of pumpkin thing and then like spring would be some sort of you know I don't know yeah. or something I don't know peat flavor or something summer flavors and all that lemon flavors whatever so so it's always like oh you know I gotta try that you know so so there you have it there we have it well we'll have to go for ice cream yeah. and and you know Sharon Sharon and I have like a debate you know <laughs> about because we all live in the same area here and there's two gelato places and the one in alley that I really like and there's one that's more um I would say more touristy but he he happens to like their gelato better for some reason so i've had it i just it just does, does nothing for me well we so, can do a taste test when i get down there definitely so you have to like be the tiebreaker <laughs> <laughs> oh i don't know about that <laughs> come on it's fun though Sounds i have to like be a tiebreaker because one of us has to win somehow <laughs> <laughs> We have to have a third, third yeah. neutral party from another area. Maybe you know? I'll make it my son. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So, um, what about you? Like, what do you like? Well, I don't eat a ton of ice cream because I'm actually lactose intolerant. Mm -hmm. However, when I do, um, sometimes I go for the seasonal. If I'm really going to be traditional, it's going to be Rocky Road or actually um, there used to be a flavor. I think it was 31 flavors called um, Jamaican Almond Fudge. Okay. Jamocha Almond Fudge. I don't even know what it's called. That's making me crazy. Like, <laughs> it was good though. It was like chocolate with swirls in it. I think our city anyway. Um, Oh, but you know what? One of my favorites is by Dryer's Grand Ice Cream at Christmas time. I love their peppermint swirl. It's pink and it has the peppermints in it. Oh my God, I love that. <laughs> I always wait. I'm like, is it ready for that flavor yet? <laughs> That's something that I would try. Like yeah. It's only like outside, you know, of the normal. But if it has caramel in it, I'm probably going to get it, especially if it's chocolate. I love chocolate and caramel, so. Awesome. Yep. So we'll have to the uh, today. So you like you just you're you're happy with like just the store bought stuff that like I mean no most no we had we used to have this really amazing amazing ice cream store and it it was ice cream it was um, more French based it was called EC which is here in French mm -hmm. um, and it was all flavor of the day it was all organic. Mm -hmm. um they had their own waffle cones um and you never knew you'd, you'd just walk in there and you were like a kid in a candy store you're like what are the flavors and you'd always have to test like three of them <laughs> like what this flavor and this flavor and this flavor um so whatever they had was honestly the best and one of the best things to do was always just buy pints of each of the different flavors and bring them home yeah. um so ec was my favorite we're, we're actually kind of in a uh we don't have that many ice cream stores anymore, actually. It's kind of sad. Um, but that was my favorite for the longest because it, it was it was French ice cream. So it was very creamy. Yeah. And I just was partial to dry ice ground ice cream because I used to work for them <laughs> in my corporate life. <laughs> yeah. you, guys, you guys still support a little bit. A little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. When I was a kid, I was talking about like early teenage years, I would take my bike and I'd ride over to um, Thrifties. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, they had the ice cream store yeah. and stuff like that. And I would, every, every Sunday, ride my bike over there and I'd get a, um, a, a, a Rocky Road root beer float. Wow, that's decadent. I know. And like every Sunday, that was my thing. It was the same every Sunday. Your happiness. And so um, Rocky Road was like always like would never miss, like always good. 
Yep. Oh, there you go. My yeah. son's favorite flavor is Rocky Road. Yeah. It's just, it's just perfect. I think whoever came up with it, it's just uh, perfect. Marshmallow, the chocolate, and a little bit of nuts. Mm. I know. You like, you, <laughs> you just get all these like things. Like you get the nuts and sometimes it's warm. You crunch into it. Like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So we're going to have to do that. I'm going to have to get you down here pretty soon. Perfect. Uh, so as per tradition, we always ask our guests um, uh, a quote that, that they would like to share for the day. Um, so I'll let you um, take it away. Okay, so I'm not going to use the one from the Chinese fortune cookie I had. Although it was <laughs> kind of a, it was something like, you need to be good at, oh, happiness comes from embracing constant change. I'm like, is that really a fortune or is that just like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised I remembered that. No, but one that's really near and dear to my heart always is be the change you wish to see in the world. Mahatma Gami Gandhi. Because it starts here. It's what I'm trying to teach my son. If we all do that, the world would be a much better place. Yeah, I I, I think that's a always an awesome one to keep in mind because we, as humans, we always tend to forget because our experience is so external, like we taking in what's going on externally and we tend to react to those things rather than, you know, creating, you know, what we desire and be the leader in, in the sense of being the example, you know? And so that quote should always, you know, be in the top of mind for all of us um, because for some reason us people we just tend to forget yeah. all the time. <laughs> we just forget all the time like hey you want something you want you know want change in the world stop telling other people to do just do it and you know and uh, hopefully somebody can join you invite them that's fine that's totally cool but you got to be that change right exactly so very uh, very good no matter what time of day <laughs> right? yeah. so all right Maya well thank you so much I thank you I very much appreciate you coming on and uh giving us uh you know some some inspiration but also um some updates about what's going on you know in your area um there's so much movement out there right now I think it's the information is really good for everybody um and uh, so if you you are in the Oakland or the Bay Area and you need some information, you are curious about real estate of any way, shape or form, um, please uh, reach out to Maya, she'll take good care of you. Um, her uh, contact info obviously here is Facebook, where she's tagged on it so you can always go there. Um, she's also on Instagram as uh, Maya, Maya Hirsu. Um, as well as I'm sure LinkedIn under the same I'll handle and everything. Your socks. <laughs> <laughs> Which is hey, I actually used to think that when you told me that that was more of a um, like a Native American, you know, name. It looks like it because Sioux looks like the Sioux Indians, but we're missing an eye in there. Right. Right. So, so it, like that was kind of right off the bat, but the, knowing that it's a it's a Bel uh, Belgium. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You know that I'm getting, <laughs> you know that I, um, I'm starting to tell people a little bit, but I'm, uh, I'm uh, going to be getting a Belgian Malinois as a um, puppy. Do you know what those are? No. So um, in short, um, you know, the police dogs that you see yes. around on, you know, either in real life or on TV and stuff like they're actually not German shepherds. Oh, I did know that actually. Yeah. They're the darker ones, aren't they? They're, they're darker, a little bit smaller, yep. and they're, they're also working dogs, but the difference is that they don't get tired. Oh. That they can work all day. And German shepherds, they can get tired after a few hours. And oh. so that's why they use those dogs. And they're not very well known be, uh, for, for house pets or for families because they're a lot of energy. Ah, you know, but you hike so much, that's why you're going to get one? So I was debating like whether I should, because I had my last one was a German Shepherd. I loved and loved him dearly. He was like the perfect temperament, the perfect dog. And he just did everything I wanted him to do. 
he's just so caring and like caring and protective like other people around like he never he was always you know um just friendly like friendly but not in a, like a not, not like a lab friendly you know right. but like, <laughs> like hey you know who are you you know let's play you know kind of thing um uh, so I thought about getting another one and I always had rescues so I didn't know any that better I never had a puppy before so I never never knew and so I thought well if I really wanted to be active and keep me on my toes you know and um and have a companion that can really um keep up in a in a sense you know because I used to take my 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 German shepherd to hiking and like sometimes I take him on my bike you get pretty tired like you'd have to stop you know and so I'm just kind of like testing my waters and it's like you know what just go all out you know just get a dog that's really going to be active and like super smart like you can train them like you know you can, as you can imagine being police dog they like can be highly trained for so many things um and so um so I'm it's a little bit of challenge you know, to have such a high energy dog, it's also, you know, somebody that I could, some, a companion I could hike with a lot and not have to worry about as much because they're just super reliable and, you know, I don't have to worry about them as much. Endurance. Yeah, endurance, that, that kind of thing too. Um, and in turn, that helps me be more accountable, you know, so. So anyway, the mom is pregnant. <gasps> And uh, she probably going to give birth in another, I want to say, maybe two, three weeks. And then um, four weeks after that, when she gives birth, her eyes open, and I can go pick one out. It just so happens that I found like one breeder that's here, like 15 minutes away. Oh, wow. The only breeder that I could find was local. Otherwise, it was like San Diego and yeah. other counties and stuff like that. So that was good. I went and met the, you know, the, the, the mom, the, the mom and the, the father of the puppies. And so, so we'll see, you know, um, I'm excited, but then it's like, when I actually pick them, pick, I wanted the females. So, because they're going to be slightly smaller than the males. So it's actually going to be probably like 10, 11 weeks away. <laughs> I'm like thinking about it right now. It's kind of driving me nuts, <laughs> you know. So, um, so that that's coming. Well, you'll you'll be seeing and hearing more about it as we go. Nice. So from your own country. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. Um, uh, I appreciate you all. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and uh, we are definitely going to be putting this up on my YouTube channel. So please, um, the link is right in the post. So please go there if you want to see other interviews as well. Um, and again, anything real estate, please feel free to reach out to Maya um, up in the Northern California area. Um, and uh, that's it for now. Uh, have a great Monday, everybody. And um, I will uh, definitely see you guys tomorrow. We have a, a really great guest who's going to talk a lot about social media. So I'm super excited about that. So please tune in. If you are have any interest in social media, please tune in and come in. Uh, we're here every day at five. So I will see you then. Um, thank you. Thank you again, Maya. Have a great day. And I look forward to talking to you soon. You bet. Bye. Bye.